Hello, my name is Mr Asprey and I'm back for the daily tricky A-level question. And today we've got a differential equation. Given that y equals 1 and x equals 0, solve this differential equation. Right, we're going to use a term, uh, sorry, a technique called separation of variables. So the first thing I do is I look at the uh, variable on the bottom here, which is dx, and I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. Okay, so doing that is going to give me dy is equal to 6xy to the power of 1 third over e to the 2x dx. Okay, so now the right hand side is where I want all my x's and the left hand side is where I want all my y's. So I'm going to divide by y to the power of a third which is the same as multiplying by y to the power of minus a third. And on this side, I'm going to bring the e to the 2x up so it becomes a negative power. And I've still got the dx there. Okay, lovely. And what that allows me to do is now I can integrate both sides of this equation. Okay, so let's integrate the left-hand side with respect to y. Well, that's just a polynomial, so I can just use my power rule where I up the power by 1, divide by the new power. So upping the power by 1 is going to give me 2 thirds, and then dividing by the new power of 2 thirds is the same as timesing by 3 over 2. Aha! This is a parts, because uh, it's a product, so I'm going to have to use differentiation, sorry, integration by parts. And I'm going to do the DI method, which is very quick and easy, uh, and I recommend you learn it. Uh -huh. So what I do is a little table like this. All right, plus, minus, plus, minus. I'm going to differentiate the polynomial part, which is the 6x. And I'm going to integrate the other part, which is the exponential part, e to the minus 2x. Okay, um, 6x six, differentiates to 6, and then 6 differentiates to 0. Uh, the integral of e to the minus 2x is minus a half, because the input is minus 2x, so we differentiate the input, and then we divide by that derivative. So that's minus 2, and we're divided by minus 2, so it's going to be minus a half. e, and then e functions just stay the same when we integrate. Okay, let's integrate again, and this time again, the input is minus 2x, so the derivative of that is minus 2, so we're going to be dividing by minus 2, which is going to give me 1 quarter, and then again, when I integrate, the e part stays the same, because e functions integrate to themselves. Okay, that's, that's enough, we just go down until we hit 0, um, and then we do this little wavy pattern, like this, which means I multiply along there, and then I multiply along here. And then the final one, well, to stop, you just integrate the final line like that. But I don't need to do that because the integral, that will be zero because I'm timesing by zero. So it's just these two um, added together is going to be my integral. So what is that? So, my, so 6x times by minus a half is minus 3x and then e to the minus 2x. And then we've got a minus sign here, don't forget about that, times by a quarter is going to be minus 3 over 2. Uh, and that is again e to the minus 2x and then plus c. Now, I know I get this question a lot, but when we do a double integral, so we integrate both sides, we only need to put c on one side because that's just enough. You could put c on both sides, but they have to be different c's, and then you could combine them to make like one big c anyway. So we just need to put it on to, on one side. Okay. Now once we've done that, we can then use our initial conditions uh, to find the value for c. So I basically just sub in. So I sub in the point uh, zero one, and that's going to give me well y to the power of, one to the power of anything is is one. So three over two times one is just three over two. Um, x is 0, so this term here is going to go to 0. Uh, but careful, when x is 0, this term won't go to 0, because e to the 0 is 1, so times through by minus 3 over 2 just gives you minus 3 over 2. 
plus C. Uh, so from here we can see <laughs> that C is uh, free. Okay, lovely. Right, let's carry on over here. Um, right, so now I can just rewrite my um, expression including C now. So y to the two thirds, so three, three over two y to the two thirds is equal to minus three x e to the minus two x minus three over two e to the minus two x uh, plus three. Okay, great. Um, so what am I going to do next? I'm going to I'm going to divide everything by three over two. I think uh, maybe let's not do that. Let's do that in, in a step by step. So first, let's times everything through by two just to get rid of all these fractions. And then let's divide everything by three just to make sure that we don't make a mistake. Take our time, it's better to take your time and not make a mistake rather than skip steps and then force an error. Okay, now we want it in the form of y to the power two. So what I've got here is y to the power two thirds. What I can do is I can raise this side to the power three and notice that the uh, powers would multiply and that would leave me with y squared uh, because two thirds times three is just two so that's good so in order to do that though of course i'm going to have to raise this to the power of three as well um just to neaten it up a bit i'll put the two first because it's the, it's the positive term and then i'll put the negative terms afterwards just uses less uh, symbols so it looks a little slightly neater and that is our final answer that is exactly the form they want it in um, as the left the right hand side is a function of x Great. Okay, um, part B. That was part A. I always forget to part, part A there. There we go. Part B. Hence find the equation of the horizontal asymptote to the curve with equation y squared is equal to g of x. Now, top tip, um, hence. That means that you have to use the working and the answer in the previous question to get the marks. You can't use a different method. So that means that I'm going to have to use the actual equation uh, to find the horizontal asymptote. Well, when do horizontal asymptotes occur? They tend to occur when x tends to infinity. Um, so x just keeps going along, 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 uh, and then y just gets to a point where it just doesn't go any higher or perhaps doesn't go any lower. So we need to imagine, we need to consider um, x tending to infinity. So when x tends to infinity, let's look at these terms. Well, what I do know is that e to the minus 2x will tend to 0 because if we've got a huge number as x, then it means that minus 2x is a huge negative number and e to the power of a huge negative number uh, is going to go to 0. Okay, so if that tends to 0, then what does y squared tend towards? Well, um, these terms are going to get knocked out, um, including the 2x, because the exponential term is stronger than the linear x term there. So that will knock that term out, and it will knock this term out as well. So it will just be leaving me with 2 to the power of 3. Okay, um, so that means that it's going to tend towards y squared is equal to 8, which, in fact is going to give me a horizontal asymptote when I square root both sides of root 8. So y is equal to root 8 is the horizontal asymptote that it will tend towards. Bosh! Right, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you tomorrow for some more tricky questions. Bye for now.